What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Natty Rock and today we are at Niagara Falls. Today we are visiting Niagara Falls and I'm going to be telling you about why the New York side of the falls is the best side. I'll also be talking about the best spots and ways to get to the falls. It says the Horseshoe Falls are this way. What? That it says Horseshoe. Oh my god, we're like above it. This video is part vlog and part travel tips and advice. If you enjoy that kind of content, make sure to subscribe and check out my mental health vlog series. I have visited both the Canada side located in Ontario and the US side of the falls located in Buffalo, New York. Today we are visiting my favorite side, New York. And these are six reasons why the New York side is way better. Number one, up close and personal. The experience of the New York side is much more up close and personal. You can feel the spray of the water on your face, you can hear the pounding of the water, and you feel as though you're standing right on top of the falls. <laughs> I've been mistaken. Number two, less crowds. I love the New York side because it is much less crowded. This is because many tout the Canada side as superior, leading to overcrowding. Is that Canada? Oh. Yeah, that's Canada right there. Actually? Yeah. Last time I went on the Canada side, there were hordes of tourists. It was absolutely packed and really hard to do anything or even get parking anywhere. Number three, less tourist traps. Granted, there will always be tourist traps anywhere with lots of tourists, but in my opinion, the Canada side of Niagara Falls is absolutely riddled with them. Number four, easier and clearer access. The US side of Niagara Falls is a state park. The park is really open, has designated parking, and is all around an easy process. It does cost $10 to get into the park, but that is for the entire car load. And the best part is, if you wanted to, the parking pass is actually able to be used again to visit another New York State Park on the same day. Some great options pertaining to the falls would be Whirlpool State Park and Fort Niagara State Park. There are actually tons of other state parks in the area to choose from, but with so many things to do at Niagara Falls State Park, how could you spend the day anywhere else? Which leads me to my next point. Number five, the attractions. On the New York side, there are several attractions that are comparable to the Canada side, but one advantage the New York side has is the Cave of the Winds. This experience ends with you standing 20 feet from the pounding torrent that is Bridal Veil Falls, where a whopping 75,000 gallons of water fall from 180 feet in the air every single second. Which means in the time that it took me to tell you this reason, over 3 million gallons of water has crashed over the side of Bridal Veil Falls. In my opinion, that's pretty impressive. The state park also offers an observation deck and the Niagara Falls USA Discovery Pass, giving you a wide variety of attractions to choose from. Number six, oldest park. Niagara Falls State Park is actually the oldest state park in the US. Quote, established in 1885 as the Niagara Reservation, it was the first of several such reservations that eventually became the cornerstones to the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation and Historic Preservation. With the park existing for over a century, I think it's safe to say this place has a ton of history and many stories to tell. Now that we talked about why I love the New York side better, let's talk tips and advice. First off, the best ways to get to Niagara Falls. There are a couple entrances to Niagara Falls State Park in Buffalo, New York, and four total parking lots. I personally suggest parking lot two, which is located on Goat Island, as this is the closest parking lot to the actual falls and leads you right to the Terra Point Lookout to get the full up-close experience of being on the edge of Horseshoe Falls, the most iconic part. Every parking lot has its advantages. For all the info in this video and more on parking, check out my article on all things Niagara Falls linked in the description below. Best time to go to the falls. Although from my experience, the New York side is much less crowded, 
that doesn't mean it doesn't get packed. The best times to go is Monday through Thursday, not including holiday weekends. If you do happen to go at a time where the parking gets filled up inside the state park, no worries, there are plenty of places to park outside, just a few minutes walk away. Best spots. Lastly, let's talk itinerary. There are actually three sections to Niagara Falls, Bright of Oak Falls, American Falls, and Horseshoe Falls, which is the section you probably picture when you think of Niagara Falls. Although Horseshoe Falls is iconic, don't forget Bridal Veil and American Falls. It is easy to miss as it's tucked away and most people walk in, see Horseshoe Falls, and leave thinking that's everything, but there is so much more. The Bridal Veil Falls viewing area is probably the best place to snap some photos and is a bit of a calmer experience. The best place to spot Bridal Veil Falls also happens to be smack dab in between Bridal Veil and American Falls, and that is Luna Island. I honestly could have sat at Luna Island all day as the rush of water was really soothing. At the end of the day, you have to gauge what you will love based on the experience you want to have. If you want to be able to see the falls in its entirety but from a distance, then the Canada side is for you. If you want to get up close and personal with the falls, then the New York side is your best choice. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me keep the channel going and bringing more travel tips and advice to you. I won't say bye because I'll see you in another video. Come on, you know you want to.